Hi guys, we're back again for another uh, lecture. Today we're lecturing on chapter 14, myocardial infarction. All right, here we go. Get your mind ready. Okay, so here we see um, the heart of someone who has had an MI. Here you see the area of the MI, the coronary arteries that were affected. And over here we see the plaque that caused the um, occlusion. So our objective for today is going to be to describe the difference between ST elevation MI or STEMI and non-ST elevation MI or non-STEMI. We're going to state the symptoms of an MI and describe the three eyes of infarction. Okay, so acute myocardial infarction. Acute myocardial infarction is a rapid development of myocardial necrosis caused by a critical imbalance between the oxygen supply and demand of the myocardium. It is an irreversible myocardial injury from prolonged ischemia. Accurate and early diagnosis is important in minimizing the cellular damage and consequently in obtaining a successful outcome for the patient. Myocardial infarctions involve death of the myocardial tissue in an area where the coronary artery has been blocked. The process begins with ischemia or lack of blood supply and progresses to injury to the areas and then causing the infarction. Ischemia and injury are reversible if circulation is restored. However, once the tissue has infarcted, it is permanently dead. Uh, myocardial cells do not regenerate. And here we see another uh, image of the dead heart muscle after a, a uh, heart attack. So remember back in uh, previous chapters when we talked about the heart uh, wall, the uh, inner layer of the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium? Right here in this middle layer, the myocardium is usually what is affected by the heart attack, okay? And if a person has a STEMI, that STEMI affects the whole middle myocardial layer. Okay, so there's two types of myocardial infarction, the ST elevation or STEMI and your non-ST elevation or non-STEMI. The STEMIs are usually usually uh, damage the entire thickness of the myocardium in a certain area of the heart. It results in ST elevation on your EKG, T wave inversion, and significant Q wave. And this uh, patient will also have, uh, probably exhibit the symptoms of an MI. So someone who has a non-STEMI uh, usually has incomplete damage and that damage only occurs to the innermost layer of the myocardium, just underneath the endocardium. It results in uh, widespread ST segment depression and T wave inversion. And these patients typically have uh, a STEMI within a few months if they're not treated. So here we see uh, an example of what the EKG will look like for a person who has a STEMI versus a non-STEMI. And here we see with the non-STEMI, the uh, ST depression. And over here is our ST elevation with the STEMI. Here again, we see what the normal ST segment should look like on a normal EKG. And then here's our ST elevation with the STEMI, our ST uh, depression with the non-STEMI, and the T wave inversion with the non-STEM. So let's look at if you have, this is a person's baseline EKG, and if they're having um, a heart attack, look how far that uh, baseline is elevated. Okay, and that's what's called the STEMI uh, that you see on the EKG when someone's having a heart attack. And 
um, you guys, it's very important that you have those uh, lead plates lead placed in the right place because that person can be experiencing a heart attack. And if your leads are in the wrong place, you may miss that image on the EKG. So here we see the ST elevation is usually the earliest reliable sign of a myocardial infarction. And here's an image showing the non stemmy See here with the non stemmy it only affects part of that uh, cell wall, uh, heart muscle. And over here with the STEMI, you see it extends throughout the whole, it damages the whole uh, heart wall. Okay, so what kind of symptoms do these patients usually have with uh, myocardial infarction? They experience uh, pain, they may have a sudden onset, maybe substernal. Uh, sometimes you may hear them describe it as feeling like an elephant is sitting on, standing on their chest. Uh, crushing, tightness, severe, it's unrelieved by the nitroglycerin, uh, and it may radiate to the back, neck, jaw, shoulder, and arm. They may have dyspnea, shortness of breath, uh, syncope, or low blood pressure, nausea, vomiting, extreme weakness, diaphoresis, and elevated heart rate. And they're usually uh, will be in denial of the symptoms, okay? So with these patients, uh, their treatment is usually gonna consist of oxygen, IV meds, to monitor uh, dietary restrictions, lowering the salt, lowering the cholesterol, decreasing the caffeine, and some may have, go on to have to have surgery or a pacemaker. Here's another illustration of uh, symptoms that a person having an MI may experience. And we see here with the uh, radiation to the arm and back or the neck and jaw, feeling sick to the stomach. They may feel lightheaded, breaking into a cold sweat, uh, trouble breathing with or without chest discomfort. And we'll see later um, that experience with symptoms, the difference between men and women. And here we are. So these are the heart attack warning signs uh, that you'll usually see in women. They will usually experience lightheadedness or dizziness, upper back pressure, chest pressure. Now they may not experience the severe chest pain per se that um, men will sometimes uh, exhibit. It just may be, uh, they may describe it just as a pressure. Shortness of breath, pain in one or both of their arms, the back, the neck, the jaw or the stomach, and they may feel extremely tired or faint. Women might not experience the chest pain that is often noted as the most common sign of a heart attack. And some women who have had heart attacks say they, they thought they just had symptoms associated with the flu. So for men, you see they have a cold sweat or nausea, chest pressure or pain, shortness of breath, pain in one or both arms, the back, the neck, the jaw, or the stomach. And if any of these symptoms uh, occur in more than five minutes, and you're unsure of the cause, you definitely need to call 911, okay? Because treatment works best if it's given within one hour of the onset of the symptoms of a heart attack. And anytime after that, you have uh, further decline. So there are three uh, areas of damage from a myocardial infarction. First, you have um, the area of injury. Next to the infarct, the tissue is viable as long as circulation remains adequate. Increasing oxygen may save this area from necrosis, and it causes ST segment elevation on the EKG. I'm sorry I said that backwards, but first you're gonna that person's gonna experience the ischemia, and then they're gonna get the injury to the tissue. Okay, so in that area, with, when the ischemia starts, the viability may not be damaged as long as the MI doesn't extend, and collateral circulation is able to compensate. And here, when they have the ischemia, you'll see the uh, ST depression. Okay, then that tissue goes on to become injured. And then if left untreated, you get 
uh, the area of N4, where the O2 is deprived and you get irreversible damage. And this is where you'll see that significant Q wave on your EKG. Okay, this is another illustration of your QRS pattern in those different areas. So here we see our normal QRS and T. And then here's what it'll look like if you have ischemia. You see here the T is uh, inverted. And then if you have injury, and then once that tissue gets infarct, you'll start having the um, significant Q wave right here. See how it gets down real deep. Okay, and watch this, you guys. This is going to give you an illustration of what those, what that Q wave looks like. And what you'll see from that um, injured tissue and then your area of ischemia. Okay, and we're going to stop there um, for this lecture. Your assignment is going to be to research the story of someone who has experienced a heart attack or interview someone you know who has experienced a heart attack. Tell their story. What symptoms did they experience? What was the course of their treatment? And what was their outcome? And submit a picture of your work when complete. And that's all I have for you guys. And I will see you next lecture.